You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is another episode about entrepreneurship. This week, I'd like to talk about scaling your business and in particular, what you can do to optimize your business as you scale it. And this is, I think, really, really important for any startup and for anyone looking at how to make their business more profitable. The things that I'm going to talk about in this episode, I think, are the things that really turned my business around and made it profitable. And ultimately, that's what gave it value uh, when we came to sell the business. So I want to talk about things that you can do like proceduralization, standardization, optimization, and knowledge capture in order to enable you to scale your business and scale your profitability as well. So the whole purpose of looking at this um, subject area is really to look at how you can reach a bigger market with the same resources or how you can increase your output faster than you increase the resources that you use in your business because ultimately that's a way to make more profit. If you can grow the business faster than you grow your costs, then obviously you're able to create more profit. And and this is really where the idea of economy of scale comes from um, in business. And the things that you can do to do this, like proceduralization, standardization, and optimizing, are really important in terms of reducing the stress that you experience in running your business. Because they're the kinds of things that help you to actually stop running around and firefighting the whole time. And they ultimately do become your competitive advantage because when you're in a field and you know how to do something really efficiently, uh, it, it's much harder to compete with you. So this is how you, you sort of take advantage of your experience and knowledge of a particular business area and create a competitive advantage for yourself. And I think it's really interesting to compare you know, this kind of thing that happens in entrepreneurship with the things that happen in bureaucracies like government. Because in government, you have a completely opposite incentive. You have an incentive to spend your budget by the end of the year. So rather than looking at how to be more efficient, the direct incentive is spend on anything and be proliferate in order to ensure that you uh, can show your um, line manager that you've spent all your budget so you can receive the same budget again next year. In entrepreneurship, you have the opposite incentive. The idea is to spend less to do the same thing or to spend the same amount to achieve more. And you make more money the less you spend. So you have this incentive to increase efficiency and to optimize and scale the business. And this is really how economic development overall happens. It happens inside individual firms. This is how people as a whole improve their lives, is through the efficiency gains and the creation of more with less that happens by entrepreneurs inside their ventures. So it's sort of like seeing on a micro scale how economic growth and development and increases in standard of living actually happen. So let's talk about what you can actually do to improve the efficiency of your business, improve the profitability, and make it more scalable. Give yourself the opportunity to grow. The first thing I'm going to talk about is standardization. This was really, really key for us. Standardization is basically about deciding on one version of whatever it is that you're doing. So it's a way of looking at how you can do things without constantly reinventing the wheel. Uh, If you have a product or service, you decide for yourselves what that product or service is, what its defining standards and characteristics are in terms of quality and in terms of what you actually deliver and so forth. And you basically decide for yourself, this is what we're doing. 
so that you don't have to keep reinventing that every time you're given a new project or, or you have a new uh, um, client order for your products. I had a uh, consultancy service business, so the way that we did this was through having an operations manual in a wiki. And that was a, a way of everyone in the company contributing to the development of our own internal standards and guidelines about what it is that we do and how we define what the quality standards and everything else are. And this is something that within your venture you all have to agree on amongst yourselves as to how you're going to do things. And the more, obviously, the more buy-in you can get from everyone, then the, the more intelligent your standards are going to be. So this isn't about setting standards necessarily from above. It's about everyone who's collaborating in the venture coming to an understanding of what the standards are that you're going to use. The next thing that really makes a difference is proceduralization. And this is really moving on from the standards, which is what you do, the one version of what you do. The procedures are how you do things. And this is really developing one method of how you do whatever it is that you do. Again, to stop yourself reinventing the wheel every time that you have to do something. In our case, in a service consultancy service business, it was really about creating how-to documents for all the procedures of everything that we did so that we could all agree on, and again, this is um, collaboratively done on our wiki and everyone contributed to it, so we could all agree how we are going to go about creating each of the analyses and statistical results and reports and observation studies and other things that we did as part of our business. Once you have standards and you go ahead and proceduralize those standards, it's much, much faster to create more of the same kind of thing that you do. So in other words, this really helps you scale your business because you can employ more people and they can very quickly get a clear idea of what it is that you're doing and how you do it. And that makes them able to contribute a lot faster as well. The next thing that you can do for scalability is optimization. And this is really about taking the procedures that we talked about in these how-to documents and so forth and finding ways of doing them faster and more efficiently. So in my case, this was all about using software to do things instead of people. We did that through things like scripting. So we used a type of software called a geographic information system, and it had a scripting language which allowed you to code scripts for uh, repetitive procedures so that rather than having someone click around and use the app for a long time to make something happen we just uh, made it happen automatically through the use of a script and we also did this with various other things um, both through scripting all the apps that we used and also through having specific pieces of software developed to do things automatically so that's one way that you can make the procedures that you develop much much faster so any time you have um, a repetitive procedure, it's always an opportunity to do that automatically and to take it out of someone's hands and put it into a, a software application which will uh, actually undertake it automatically and much, much faster. The other um, opportunities that we found for optimization are things like templates. So of all of the... Um, documents that we produced were produced with standard templates with standard formatting and this means that you just have one set of templates which is used to format all the different kind of documents that you need to produce. You can also um, optimize by doing things like creating reusable content. So in our case we had a lot of reports and those reports often had to explain um, some of the types of analysis that we would do. And we had a lot of content that we could simply reuse in each of those reports uh, because for, for new clients, if we'd already explained it to a previous client, then we could just use the same text um, in, uh, for another new client to explain this is, this is what this report means and this is how to interpret the results and so forth. And really, you know, all of these things uh, are about creating ways to do 
what you've already decided to do faster and more efficiently. And that gives you the opportunity to produce more output with the same number of people and with the same number of resources in terms of computers or whatever, and therefore to uh, generate more profit. Another issue that's really important for scaling your business is knowledge capture. And what I mean by that is preparing and working with the inevitable truth that any employee at some point may leave your company and may find other things to do that are more rewarding or exciting or interesting or whatever. So you have to work with that knowledge in mind. And what that means is you have to find a way to ensure that the knowledge that people working inside your company gen generate uh, is captured and is usable by others. So this is really all about avoiding the situation where you have one guru in any particular aspect of your business who everyone goes to uh, as the guy who solves this type of problem. And then if that one guru leaves and takes all of their knowledge with them, then you have a real problem because then you have to kind of rebuild and try and work out what the hell that person was doing um, that solved whatever particular problem it is that you have. And the way that you really overcome that is by getting people systematically to put all of their knowledge in a form that others can use. And this, again, is really about standardization and proceduralization. If you have it as part of the culture that you don't have gurus, that all knowledge is shared in a way that is really clear, then that means if anyone leaves, the standards and the procedures are in place. So, for example, if you have a system administrator who looks after your, your network and your computers and everything else, it's really important that what they're doing is written down and that you know exactly how to look after, um, how they're looking after all of the IT resources so that if they do leave, a new sysadmin can see what's being done and can actually get a handle on it quickly. And again, we did all of this using a wiki and we had all of these um, standards and procedures uh, in place in the wiki. And that means even if you have really highly skilled employees who are doing things that you don't necessarily completely understand how to do yourself, you still capture the knowledge so that if they do leave, you can continue scaling and you can replace them very easily without having this problem of you know, them taking a whole chunk of knowledge inherent in your business with them. I guess the last thing to, to say that you really uh, do need to think about in terms of scaling your business is the question of optimizing your business as a whole. Because one of the things about optimization is that it's really important to not continue optimizing things that you shouldn't really be doing in the first place. So there is a question of how you optimize not for individual activities but for the business as a whole, which means rather than improving the efficiency of something that you shouldn't be doing, you actually stop doing it and you redirect resources to something uh, more effective or more profitable in the long term. This is something that bigger companies and bigger corporations find particularly hard to do. Um, they get ingrained in what it is that they're doing and they find it very hard to change their activities. But it's a really vital part of the sort of creative destruction process of entre entrepreneurship itself is to identify where you're involved in producing things that ultimately don't have a future or that there isn't really a market for or you simply are not going to be competitive in. Then you have to look very carefully at whether or not you should be doing them in the first place and adjust you know, what your activities are to better suit the overall vision that you have for your business. And that really involves taking a step back and ensuring that you don't um, just keep optimizing and making more efficient activities that shouldn't be done in the first place. So those are some ways in which you can look to optimize, standardize, proceduralize your business in order to help you scale. And this is really one of the ways in which entrepreneurs in doing this process make the world a better place. This is how you get spontaneous standards across businesses occurring. You don't even need regulations to enforce this. It's something that happens naturally that people involved in a particular industry discover that it's actually easier to collaborate with each other on an open standard and to agree that standard. And you can see many, many examples of this in software. That's how the whole internet has been built, is through open standards. 
And in pursuit of this kind of optimization, this is how entrepreneurship removes all repetitive work that people have to do. It's one of the really fantastic incentives that come from being involved in entrepreneurship is that you find yourself looking very carefully for any work that's repetitive and looking at how you can get that work done by a machine because a machine will do it more efficient, efficiently. And this is really a way to free up your people to focus on what it is that people do best, which is creative thinking and really you know, using their, their minds, their creativity, rather than being involved in repetitive drudge work. It's absolutely the opposite to the kind of incentive that you see in government and in school, which is all about making you do repetitive and time-wasting tasks. Just think about how much time you waste uh, in filling in forms for bureaucracies, in standing in lines for security theatre at airports, um, in queuing to get your passport or to get anything in a post office. You know, it, it's completely different when an entrepreneur or a private company is trying to look at a process they're all about optimizing it and making it as efficient as possible and when you do this it really gets you to think more like an engineer and to look at how you can improve any process and to make it more efficient and in doing that you know that help that's a kind of thing that can really be applied to help you in your wider life it helps you understand the value of your time and it helps you look at how to get more out of life, how to enrich your life by getting rid of any repetitive procedure so that you can get the most of your resources and focus your time and your money on things that give you most uh, joy and, and most ability to, to express yourself fully. It's a mindset that comes from doing this in entrepreneurship. So I hope that's helpful and I would love to hear any feedback you have, any thoughts you have about scaling your business, standardizing, proceduralizing, optimizing, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.